Welcome to AP Statistics. In this video, we're going to explore quantitative data by looking at how to identify outliers. Now, how do you find an outlier in a data set? Well, we don't really want to just use our eyes and say, oh, that looks like a high value, that looks like a low value. We want to actually have ways to mathematically determine yes or no, we have an outlier. So there are two accepted methods to identifying outliers. One is called the fence method, and one is called the standard deviation method. I'm going to be honest, those aren't really um, official mathematical methods by name, but that's kind of what I call. It. So basically using fences or using standard deviations. So we'll talk about each of those right now. All right, the fence method is the first way where we use our quartiles. It's actually really simple. So basically what we do, you know, we have our data. Okay, there's our data. And we, we create fences. And we say if anything is below a certain low fence, then it's, it's officially an outlier. Those would be outliers. Or if anything is above some upper fence, well, anything above that upper fence is an outlier. So how do you find these fences? Well, first off, these are not actual data values. These are just numbers that we're going to calculate that kind of set those fences of, hey, if you're outside the fence, you're an outlier. Inside the fence, not an outlier. And to find the fences, it's so easy. All you need are your quartiles, quartile one and quartile three. And we also need the IQR. But remember, the IQR is just Q3 minus Q1. So it's really easy. And hopefully you've watched other videos that you know what the quartiles are. So look how simple this is. The upper fence is found by taking the third quartile, adding 1.5 times the IQR. So again, don't forget, the IQR is found by simply doing Q3 minus Q1. That's how you get the IQR. So this is going to result in a value. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at your data and you're going to say, all right, are any individual data values bigger than the upper fence? If the answer is yes, then those values are outliers, upper outliers. Then we find the lower fence. So here we take Q1, we subtract, because we're going down lower, 1.5 times the IQR. Once again, the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So this is going to, again, result in a value, a number. And then you're going to go to your data and you're going to say, all right, are there any values below that lower fence? If the answer is yes, then they are outliers. Now, if you don't have anything above the upper fence, you don't have anything below the lower fence, well, then you don't have any outliers. It is possible that you can have outliers on both sides. It's possible you can have outliers only on one side. It's possible that you can have multiple outliers. Again, that's to be the fence method. You find the upper and lower fence and you look at your data and you're going to know right away if you've got any outliers or not. Now, the second method is using standard deviation and mean. Now, if you watch the video over spread, I said <laughs> numerous times that most data, not all, please, most data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So if you take your mean, you go up one standard deviation, you go down one standard deviation, that's where most of your data is. In fact, that's very typical for data to be there because, hey, that's where most data is anyway. But if we go two standard deviations above the mean, or two standard deviations below the mean, well, that would be strange. So, so it's similar to our fence method, but it's how we get the fences that's different. So here, if we add two standard deviations and three standard deviations from the mean, we're establishing fences. And anything outside of two standard deviations is, th that, would be, that would be weird data. That would be really high or really low data, which we would call outliers. And I want to make sure you understand this. I'm telling you that most data, well over 50% of data, is within one standard deviation of the mean in any data set. So if I go, okay, well, let's, let's, you know, remember we talked about casting a net, right? We talked about here's the mean right here, and we go up one standard deviation, and we go down one standard deviation. It's like casting a net, and inside of that net is going to be over 50% of your data. Well, imagine if we extend that net down a second standard deviation, up a second standard deviation, now we should have pretty much all of our data, right? That's, that's the point, is if you got a lot of your data within one, you should have almost all of your data within two. So again, we're creating these fences, two standard deviations below, two standard deviations above, then you got to look at your data. Any data above that? Any data below that? If so, probably going to be outliers. Now, some textbooks, some statisticians might extend that to three standard deviations. 
Now, to me, that is being like super duper strict. But imagine you have your mean in the middle of your data and you go up one standard deviation. You go up two, you go up three, you go down one, you go down two, you go down three standard deviations. There they are. Well, again, think about what I've been saying. Within one is the large majority of your data, over 50%. Within two, um, yeah, like pretty much all your data. Within three, I mean, come on, you should have literally all of your data within three standard deviations. But if there is any value that is lower than three standard deviations or higher than three standard deviations above, then those values should certainly be deemed outliers. I like to go with two. I think two is good enough. I mean, three is, is okay. It's fine. But three is going really high, really low. I like to go with two. So either of these methods helps to find outliers. All right, let's actually see how we could use this with some real numbers now. All right, so here is um, at a Pokemon convention, we went around and interviewed 117 kids. So that's my sample size, N is 117. And we simply asked the kids, how many Pokemon cards do you have? Uh, one kid said they have none. One kid said they have 3,000. Okay, but, you know, the mean, the average kid out of 129.4, the median was 50. Now let's stop right there. Let's, let's try to, you know, think about everything I've been trying to teach you through these videos. When you have a mean and median that are very far apart, like these two, that means you're skewed. Now, since the mean is higher, way higher, this means that our data is going to be skewed to the right. Well, that's probably because of that enormous, I'm going to go ahead and say probably an outlier, but we're going to say that officially in a moment. That outlier of 3,000 is going to dramatically affect the mean, pulling it higher, and that is why our mean is so much higher than the median. Now, our standard deviation was 323.6. Why is that standard deviation so large? Well, because of that huge outlier. The true mean and the SE mean, don't worry about those right now. That is way for a later time in the year. Right now, we're talking about also our quartiles here. So quartile 1, quartile 3, we're 30 and 95. So think about that for a second. Well, right? 50% of my um, kids were between 30 Pokemon cards and 95 Pokemon cards. So that just goes to show that that maximum of 3,000 is probably going to be an outlier because the majority, 50%, were between 30 and 95. But the point is, let's actually use our two methods to identify if we have any outliers. So first, we'll use the fence method. So the low, or let's do the upper fence first. The upper fence is going to be taking Q3, 95, plus 1.5 times the IQR. Now the IQR is Q3 minus um, Q1. So if I do 95 minus 30, I get an IQR of 65. So grab a calculator if you need one, but we're gonna do 95 plus 1.5 times 65, and we get 192.5. Now, then what we would do is we'd go back and look at our 117 kids. Do any of them have more than 192.5 Pokemon cards? If they do, they're an outlier. So I can officially say we have one outlier for sure. Whatever kid has 3,000 is definitely going to be an outlier. It's way more than 192.5. Now, could there be more outliers? Yeah, sure. I mean, maybe there's another kid that has 1,000 Pokemon cards. Wasn't the max, but still a lot. That would definitely be over our fence. I just don't know that for sure. I do know that that max is for sure. All right, then we're going to do the lower fence. That was our upper fence. The lower fence is Q1 30 minus 1.5 times our IQR, which we already said was 65. 30 minus 1.5 times 65 is negative 67.5. Now, again, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our 117 kids, and we're going to look at all the different numbers of Pokemon cards that were shown to us. And does anybody have negative 65.5 Pokemon cards? No, you can't even have negative. That wouldn't make sense. So clearly there are no lower outliers. You can't even be negative in this situation. So clearly nobody has less than negative 65 Pokemon cards. So there are no lower outliers. So for sure we have an outlier 3000. Could there be more upper outliers? Possibly. I just don't know without actually having the 117 values in front of my face. Now, we could also use that standard, deviate, standard deviation method, right? So that's where we take our mean of 129.4, and we're going to go up, and we're going to go down. So we're going to add, and we're going to subtract two 
times the standard deviation. Okay, now remember, if I go up and down one standard deviation, I'm gonna have the large majority of my kids, the large majority of my number of cards. If I go up or down two, I should have a lot of them. Anybody left over, gonna be an outlier. So 129.4, I'm literally using my calculator right now, 129.4 plus two, ti type something in wrong, sorry, times 323, it's hard to talk and type at the same time. Um, that gives me an upper value of 776.6. So if anybody has more than 776.6 Pokemon cards, like our maximum does, that is gonna be an outlier. Could there be more upper outliers without seeing the 117 numbers in front of me? I don't know for sure, but I definitely know that maximum kid is gonna have be an outlier. Then I'm gonna do 129.4 minus the two times 323.6. And we get negative 517.8. Again, then you're gonna go look at your data. Does anybody have less than negative 517.8 cards? No, it's clearly impossible. So there's no lower um, fences. So again, it's going to, for the most part, these two methods will arrive at the same answer of, you know, what are your outliers? And it's, it's both have this idea of creating these fences. It's just how do we create those fences? Using the fence method where we take the quartiles and go up or down 1.5 times the IQR. Or if we use this idea of standard deviation, go up or down by two standard deviations. I could extend that to three. Um, but again, I like to go with two, but I, I would imagine even if we went up three standard deviations, we're still going to say 3000 is crazy high. So, you know, overall, this is trying to show you about the, um, fence and the standard deviation method to identify outliers, but I hopefully, you know, you know, I know I kind of scribbled all over this thing here. I may want to erase some of this, but hopefully, you know, you start to learn when you have information in front of you, you can interpret a lot of information about your data. And all you have to do is, is understand these numbers. Now, true mean, don't ever worry about. SE mean, we're not going to worry about for a while. So again, we understand that, hey, just because the mean and median are so far apart, that tells us that we're skewed to the right. The mean is so much higher than the median. That, that tells me shape. And I don't even have a picture of this data in front of me. The fact that the difference between the Q3 and Q1, my IQR is only 65 cards, tells me that the middle 50% is not that spread out, but the range is huge. The range would be 3,000. Well, listen, that's because of a potential outlier, which we actually identified is an outlier. And then here's the last point I want to make here. This is really important, right? Mean and standard deviation, they have to take every value into account. Like the formulas to find those mean and standard deviation, they need every value. So a value like 3,000 is gonna really skew them and throw them off. That's why the standard deviation and the mean are so high compared to the median and the IQR. Because the median and the IQR, they don't care about outliers. They just care about being in the middle. So what happens on the outsides doesn't even matter. So in this situation, if I had to describe the data, I would use the median and the IQR because they're not so influenced by the outliers that I clearly have in this data here. So if I had to say, hey, how many Pokemon cards does a typical kid have? 50. 50. 50 is what I would say. Because that is way more typical than 129.4 because that 129.4 was so easily influenced by that outlier of 3,000. All right, that's it. Hopefully this video was fairly short, but you learned about how to identify outliers. Two different ways to do it. You're essentially creating these fences. If you're outside the fences, you're an outlier.